Now, um, if you doubt your salvation, does it mean that you're not truly saved? Sometimes as a believer, you, 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 you feel you doubt your salvation at some point. Because most believers, at one time or another, have doubted their salvation. There can be several causes of uh, doubt. Um, some are valid and some are not. But uh, if you doubt your salvation, uh, there are some steps that you can take to find reassurance or also to dispel the doubts and the rest and uh, you can be able to rest in the promises of God first it is good to know that whether or not you have doubts is not what determines your salvation no some genuine believers struggle with doubt while some unbelievers also who presume to be saved and uh, have never had a doubting moment some of them will have a rude awakening someday. There are some people who don't even doubt their, their salvation, but they'll have a rude awakening. Because the Bible tells us this. In uh, Matthew 7.21, it says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. So meaning, there are many people who are saying, Lord, Lord, they, they are so sure about their salvation, and yet they don't do the will of God and uh, they'll be cast out. They'll be cast out. See what the Bible says. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that walk iniquity. Now, why would God be telling them, I never knew you? Simple, because he never knew them. They have never been, you know, they have never been connected with him through salvation. They've just been in church and they, they, they continued. I've been, I've, been, I've been like that for the last, for about 30 years. I was in church. I was a choir boy. I was, uh, you know, doing everything. And I thought I was saved. And I was so sure about my salvation. But I was always doubting. Until God showed me the truth, I could have just been, you know, cast out on that day. So it is not automatic that the presence of doubt indicates a lack of salvation. You, you see, that's, that's what we have to understand. It's not all people who have doubts, it means they're not saved. My case was different and others are also different probably. And others, they're just doubting but they are completely saved. And by the end of this teaching, you'll be able to understand. So also, it doesn't mean that the absence of doubt attests to salvation okay so you have to understand this so people really fear this they fear so much <laughs> that one day they may be cast out and uh, one thing one reason why people doubt their salvation is the presence of sin in their lives when you are you you have done some sinful things over and over you feel like chains you know, it's like you're, you're held by something and, and uh, you never know, God might be telling you so that you might uh, adjust yourself. Like the way the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 12 verses uh, 1, the Bible tells us something here. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with a so great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who is the joy, who for the joy was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the, uh, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So the Bible speaks of sin that so easily entangles. Sin can entangle, okay? Many true Christians struggle against besetting. That is uh, against, uh, uh, that is the habitual sins. And this may cause them to doubt their salvation. So it is important here to recognize that despite the Christian's uh, the Christian being a new creation in Christ, okay, 
um, everyone still sins. We all stumble in many ways. The Bible tells us this in James. So don't uh, be so much scared. James 3.2 It tells us that we all stumble. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in the in word, the same is a perfect man, and are able also to buy, uh, bridle the whole body. The, the Bible tells us, in so many things we offend, almost in everything we are offending, we are always sinning, we are always doing different things. But uh, that does not mean we have lost salvation. You can't lose your salvation. But I want to make you understand why people get doubts, and why it's also important to examine this doubt, okay? Now, the difference for the believer is the attitude towards sin and the response to it. How you respond to sin. As a, this guy here, there's a guy called Adrian Rogers. Adrian Rogers, he said, before I got saved, I was running to sin. Now, I'm running from it. And if I fail, I turn right around and start running away again. So, all the time, he's running away from sin. Meaning, he knows that uh, as a Christian, you will find sometimes yourself you're in doing sins. And you're doing wrong things. That does not mean that you're, you've lost your salvation. But you're running away from it every day. It is also important to know that the presence of sin in one's life can be a sign, probable, probably, that you're not saved. The Bible is clear that willful sinning or willful and repented sin is an indicator of an untransformed heart. Because your sin will separate you from God. So, if you're willfully sinning all through, then there's a possibility. Ask yourself, am I really saved? Because the Bible says in uh, 1 John 3.6, let's see what the Bible says. 1 John uh, 3 verses 6, the Bible tells us something here. 1 John 3.6, it says, Whosoever abided in th him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. If you sin, you don't know him. And also in verse 9 says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So God and sin, they don't work together. And also we can check uh, Romans. Romans 6, from verse 1 and 2. See what the Bible says. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we? That they are that that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How? How? How can you say you want to continue with willful sinning if you've gotten saved? So if you're living in a lifestyle that the Bible condemns as sinful, then there's a spiritual problem. Do Christians sin? Yes, they do sin. Do they willfully continue in sin? No, they don't. If you doubt your salvation, if you doubt your salvation because of sin in your life, then confess the sin to God and ask for his forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Then take the steps not to repeat the sin. Take the steps not to repeat the sin. The Bible tells us in Luke in the book of Luke uh, 3, 8, Luke 3, verses 8, the Bible tells us something here. Bring forth therefore fruits worth, worth of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. There are those who just say, ah, you see, Abraham is the father of faith, you are children of Abraham. No, we don't care. No, God says, bring forth fruits worth of repentance. Are you having some good works showing that for sure you have repented? Fruits are works. And uh, just go and check my other video where I was tackling about uh, 
is it salvation by faith or uh, are we saved by works? And of course, I've shown it's all about it's faith alone, but then there have to be works to prove your faith. Are you seeing this one? So the very fact that you recognize sin and struggle against it in your own life is proof that the Holy Spirit is at work. Cooperate with that. Cooperate with what he is doing. He's trying to tell you, hey, there's something wrong. Just the same way, even as myself, I was, I was always, uh, you know, thinking sometimes uh, because I said a sinner's prayer for over 30 years, but when people talk about the rapture, I'm so much scared and I don't know what's going to happen. And every day I was feeling, I'm, am I really saved? I'm scared this, this much. It was the Holy Spirit telling me, Keith, you are not saved. You're only believing in a prayer which you say the sinner's prayer and you've never understood salvation. And it's a good indicator. So when you see yourself, you are always fearing and you really doubt yourself if you're, uh, you're saved. Then think about something. Probably the Holy Spirit is telling you to confess your sin. To look and see what exactly is the gospel and you'll be able to understand. Because you can't lose your salvation. That is one thing. But the Holy Spirit can show you if you are not saved and he tries to clear up and give you some, you know, convictions and things like that. Another reason people doubt their salvation is the absence of godly works. Godly works. Now, the Christian life involves more than just turning from sin. It includes doing good. And uh, Jesus said that every good tree bears good fruit. Are you that kind of tree? Are you that kind of tree? Do you have some good works? Because you can't say you're saved, but you're living the same way that you used to live before you were saved. Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. So what kind of a tree are you? Are you producing good fruit to show that for sure this person is saved? Do you have some good works? And also Paul wrote in uh, Titus 3.14, he talked about and said, let our people learn to devote themselves to good works so that they can help cases of urgent needs and not be unfruitful. Let me show you what Paul says. Uh, he says in Titus 3.14, look at this, look at this. Let ours also learn to maintain good works. You see Paul is talking about works. People only say that, uh, you, you see Paul just says faith, faith, faith. No, he also talks about works because works is important to show that your faith was really true. For necessary uses that they are not unfruitful let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they are not unfruitful you can say you have fruit and they are no good works that's why probably you you fear now there are some 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 people who inspect the fruit of their own life and uh, find it lacking and they wonder if they are really saved have you, have you ever sat down in some memory lane and thought, am I really saved? You see, their mistrust is uh, that, that, that they are a good tree could be because there are some reasons which you can be thinking and saying, I, I don't think I'm a good tree. I don't know if I'm really saved because uh, um, maybe number one, they have set a higher standard for themselves than God has. They are putting some weird standard up there. That is a minimizing what God has done through them. They, 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 they don't see what God has done. They, they are putting another standard. And also number two, they are probably foolishly measuring themselves against others and their fruit. Do you know there are people who measure their fruit by the fruit of others? They say... Mm. But I see that pastor, I see that guy, he does this and this and this. Am I like, uh, you know, this and this and this? And uh, when we look at uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 12, 2 Corinthians uh, 10, verse 12, 
it tells us something here. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You see, don't, don't compare yourself and say, oh, my fruit is not like, uh, you see, this person, I'm, I'm not like Carter Conlon, I'm not like Robert Brecker, I'm not like uh, 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 Generation 2434, I'm not like uh, all these other good guys, I'm not like J.D. Farag, I'm not, I'm not like these other people who are doing great works. That can be something that uh, you're worried about, okay? You're looking and you're thinking, oh, I'm not like this and that. And also another thing which might make you really doubt your salvation is that, number three, is that there are people who lacks in their pursuit of good works. You don't have that emphasis of wanting to do good works. You just want to sit down and just say, oh, it's okay, I'll... You don't have the good works. You're not kind. You're not this and that. You don't help others. You don't have joy. You don't have peace. You, you don't have all these good works, and, but you don't, pass, you don't have the pursuit for them. That can be another thing which can bring you doubts, and you doubt, am I really saved? Number four, some of them, some of the people who have these doubts, they are not saved. And therefore, they do not have the motivating love of Christ. Do you know there's a motivating love of Christ which God can give you? Some love? Some good love of Christ? I remember before I got saved, I was, uh, I, it used to be very hard for me to read the Bible. I used to look at the Bible as this kind of, you know, it's like, have you ever eaten some food which was just uh, so cold and you can't understand why people are eating this? And you're asking yourself, what do people enjoy in this book? What do people really enjoy? I, I, I didn't have that because I had no motivation. But the moment you get saved, you start feeling the fire and the, and the eagerness to do good things. So if you doubt your salvation because of lack of good works, then confess the sin of omission. Confess. Confess the sin of omission to God and ask for his forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Then it is time to stir up the gift of God, which is in you. The Bible tells us to stir the gift, stir, okay? Second Timothy, Second Timothy 1, verse 6, okay? It says, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. You stir up, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Stir. You see, stir that gift. Those good works, bring them on and you'll start feeling that you're really saved and, you know, things like that. You see, there, there are plenty of works, uh, good things that you can do for the kingdom. There are so many things that you can do for the kingdom. And uh, the Bible gives plenty of direction about the will of God, generally for Christians. Now, you have to be careful not to set up false performance standards to compare your good deeds with others. You should ask what he would have you to do and do that. Look at what the Bible says in Luke. Luke 10, 10 2. Luke 10, verses 2. It says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers unto his harvest. So he's saying, there's a lot of things that you can do, but ask God, pray to him and ask him, God, what do you want me to do? So that I can feel I have the good works, so that I can feel I, I am getting full, and I can see the benefit, and I can see the workmanship that you have created in me. Now, some people, especially those who are saved at a very young age, many usually doubt their salvation because they don't remember <laughs> their, con their conversion very well. M many people don't remember their conversion very well. They can't have that memory learn. They, they don't remember when. They, they, they are really thinking, when is that? And they wonder if the decision they made as a child was genuine. Now, such feelings are common in adults who are saved as children. 
And uh, in such case, cases, it is good to review the promises of God and remember that Jesus invites children to come to him. So you are invited also as a child to come to him. See what the Bible says in Mark 10, 14. Mark 10, 14. See. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. So there is a time that God invited you as a child. And don't despise the humble beginnings. Don't despise that time and say, oh, because I don't know what is atonement. I don't know these bigger terms. I don't know these deeper sentences that people say. I didn't know those times. Was I really saved? No. Jesus let, left it open even for the children. Now, salvation is based on the grace of God and faith in Christ, not our knowledge. It is by grace through faith. It's not our knowledge of wisdom or sophistication. As the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it's, it's, it's not our works. It's not by how good we are. It's by the little faith, that, that innocent faith that we have had in Christ. That's exactly where salvation comes in. And Jesus promised that those who are his will never perish. That is according to John 10, 28. Jesus said, those who are his, they will never perish. Okay. Now, if doubts per persist about the genuineness of your childhood conversion, you should make sure uh, 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 you should make sure you also check out your faith as well, what you believed that time. You see, it's good to evaluate yourself all the time. Regardless of what you did as a child, do you believe now that Jesus died for your sins and rose again. You should evaluate that. Because if as a child you really doubt. If, when I was a child, do, did, did I, did I, did I? You have those kind of doubts? Ask yourself right now as, as you're living. Do you believe that uh, Jesus died for your sins and rose again? Are you placing your faith in him alone? So that's another reason for the presence of doubt concerning salvation. Which is always persistent guilt, persistent guilt over the past sins. Sometimes you check and you say, my past sins. But ask yourself, do I put my faith in Christ alone? Or am I looking on my works, on my things which I've done? And am I constantly walking, trying to uh, uh, forbid sin and uh, walk in the way of salvation? Or am I walking towards sin? You see, you have to ask yourself, am I walking towards sin or am I walking out of sin? That's how you can be able to understand if really your salvation is genuine. We all have regrets about, you know, past misdeeds and we all have a spiritual enemy that the Bible calls the accuser. You know, Satan is the accuser. All the time, he's accusing us before uh, 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 Christ. He's accusing and the combination of regrets and accusations can spur much doubt. The Bible says this <clears throat> in Revelation 12 verses 10. Let me show you who is that accuser. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuses them before our, our God day and night. So this accuser is Satan. He's always casting doubt inside you and telling you, you're not saved. You, you're bad. You know what you did yesterday. No, the Holy Spirit convicts you unto righteousness. He doesn't accuse you. Fortunately, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. First John 4.4 4. If you doubt your salvation because of guilty feelings, then ask yourself, were those sins over, over, over which I feel guilty? Were they confessed to God? Did you tell God, God, I'm sorry for what I did yesterday? Just think about you being a child. Eh? When you're a child and uh, you're living with your father, whenever you do something wrong to him, do you go and tell him, oh, please, dad, please become my father once again? No, you just tell him, dad, I'm sorry for what I did. I, I'm sorry for losing the remote. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for that. But you don't go and tell them, please make me your child again. When you tell God, okay, God, please save me again. Then it's like you're telling God, uh, God, please die on the cross again for my sins. No, he already did it once. Now is the accuser who is telling you you have done wrong. Just go to your father and tell him, 
Father, I'm, I'm sorry for what uh, happened yesterday. I'm sorry for this and this which I did. And uh, move on. You're already a child. You're, you're in the family. Are you seeing this? If so, then know this. God has already removed that sin from you. If you keep on thinking and being listening to the accuser, the Bible says that he has blotted out our sins. He blotted out our sins. And pin them at the cross. And removed that sin from you. He has removed the sin from you. Now you are walking in a clear path. As, uh, the, 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 as far as the east is from the west. That's how far he has you know, thrown your sin away. Psalms 103 verse 12. Now this promise stands forever. It's not, uh, it's, it's not standing until you sin or something happens. No, he said that he has already forgotten your sin. And that one stands forever. So if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's what the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9. It says that he is faithful to forgive us. Now once he has forgiven us, does it mean that he's always looking back and saying, okay, you did this yesterday, uh-huh, uh-huh, what did you think yesterday? No, he has already forgiven you and made a clean slate for you. But also something else that I like to say, tell you because uh, I want to be as neutral as possible so that I don't, uh, I don't you lead you into a ditch. You have to understand that sometimes doubting is a good thing. You see, doubt can, uh, just like pain, alert us to a problem that needs to be addressed. And uh, that's why the Bible is always very keen about us examining ourselves. We are to test ourselves to be sure that we are in the faith. This is exactly what I did to myself. I tested my salvation after 30 years of uh, being in church and, and uh, just uh, not sure if I'm really saved because I said the sinner's prayer. I tested my faith because I was like, mm, are you, Keith, are you really in the faith? Are you really in the faith? I kept on testing myself and asking God. And uh, when I tested, God revealed to me the truth that I was lost. Lost. Because I thought uh, I put my trust on a prayer. But I, could, I should have put my trust in Christ. Now the Bible says, Paul here tells us, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? Don't you know yourself? How that Christ is in you, except you be reprobate? Test yourself. Test yourself. Ask yourself, am I in the faith? Be sure that you're born again. And uh, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, then you have eternal life. And uh, God wants you to be confident of your salvation. He wants you not to be doubting your salvation. He wants you to be confident. See what the Bible says in uh, Romans uh, 8.38. Romans 8.38. Uh, See, God does not want you to be doubtful. He wants you to be sure. He says, for I am persuaded, this is Paul saying, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus Christ, our Lord. So there's nothing which can separate you. God wants you to be sure, sure, absolutely sure that you're saved. First John, First uh, John, uh, 5.13, see what it says here. See what it says here. These things have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So there is a way that you can know, you can know that you have eternal life. And that's exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to cast out all fear. The Bible tells us, uh, 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 love casts uh, true love you know uh, love casts out all fear so if you have the love of Christ and you sure you love him then he will cast out all the fear so doubting sometimes can come when you don't really understand if you're saved or not or there's something that the Holy Spirit wants you to understand and that's why it's very very important to examine yourself and ask yourself am I really in the faith Examine yourself, look at yourself and ask, am I in the faith? And of course, make sure that you have good works and you do what is right and you walk with God and, and everything will be okay. And if you're out there 
and you've been examining yourself and you've found, eh, I'm not really saved. I don't really agree with myself. Then you have to find the gospel. The Bible tells us in Ephesians uh, 1.13, in whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So you must trust someone after you hear something. You trust Jesus after you hear the gospel. So that with that, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the earnest of our inheritance? The Holy Spirit is the earnest of our inheritance. It's the assurance that you will go to heaven. And what is that gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it speaks and tells us about how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What really happened to Jesus? He died at the cross. Why did he die at the cross? For your sins. You're the one who was supposed to be at this cross, but Jesus replaced himself. Go and watch my other video about the, the atonement. You'll be able to understand. He, he replaced himself here because you are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. But since you are a sinner, you're supposed to die. Jesus said, no, no, it's okay. God the Father, hold on. Let me go and die for that person. Let me replace myself. So that if they believe that this death was for them, for, for them, then they are saved. You have to understand that Jesus died. He was buried and rose again according to the scriptures for you. For you. And when you understand that and you believe that, then confess it to God. The Bible says you confess with your mouth. Confess out. Tell him what you have, uh, you know, confess. Confession is made with the mouth, but believing is made from the, from the heart. You believe from the heart. Now, why do we need to confess? Confessing is basically explaining what you know. You can go to a law of court and tell people, Hey, I know that thief, I, he, that day he got into the house, and you don't know, you confess what you know. That's why confession is only on what you know. The sinner's prayer does not save. If you think you're saved because you said a prayer, you're not saved. You're saved by what you know, then you've confessed it to the right person in prayer. You tell Jesus, Jesus, I know, now I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures for me. And I believe and I understand and I accept that atonement that you shed for me. The blood that you shed, it was for me. And I accept, Lord, and I wish and I pray that, Lord, you may help me to walk in your ways. And once you do that, and you believe it completely in your heart, ask God to give you good works. And you'll start now seeing good works, good works. And the accuser, the devil, will not come again and start giving you doubts. And whenever he comes with his doubts, tell him, no, I'm already saved and nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you like this video, please give it a, a, a thumbs up. And also you can share the video to other people so that they can be able to understand the truth of God. And also you can uh, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any video. And uh, of course, uh, hit the uh, notification button so that you, whenever we post a new video, because we post every day, several videos, you don't miss one and you can be edified as Christ comes. God bless you and have a blessed time.